Wow. Am I on? Yeah. So I had memorized how I should start this talk, but then Andy came up and I cracked up, so now I forgot how to start this. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I guess most of you um, uh, already saw the good news uh, from our side that uh, MySQL 8 is out. Uh, it was released uh, last week, and of course that's what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I lost sound, I think. Okay, now back. Um, I've been with MySQL since uh, 2003. Um, been in databases since 2001, where I was working uh, on uh, a, a database for for telecom applications, which are now is now known as MySQL Cluster. Okay, uh, so MySQL 8. Um, um, on the first slide here, uh, of course, MySQL is, is known for a relational database, doing SQL, and of course, MySQL 8 has a lot of improvements in that area. But what is less known, and what I want to advertise here, so if you, don't, if you go away from here and you only take one thing with you, uh, I want you to know that uh, with MySQL 8, uh, uh, we have great NoSQL doc store support. Um, okay, this should also be a familiar slide. Uh, MySQL is powering the web. We've seen Peter showing uh, how, how uh, MySQL is everywhere. It feels like sound is coming and going, is it? Okay. It's okay. when you look right, it's better than mic. Okay, okay. Maybe it's my great tattoo here that I want to make sure that the photographer gets a, a good picture of. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, um, yeah, so um, uh, MySQL powers the web. Uh, but of course, the web is not static. It evolves over time. Uh, we've seen also in, in, in several talks before here, uh, 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 early on, uh, Facebook and, 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 uh, and or uh, Sugo from, from uh, YouTube was thinking, okay, it's only the, the very, very big web properties that are gonna have to worry about scale and so on. But okay, the web evolves. And our claim is that the MySQL has succeeded very well with evolving with the web. Um, the last release was, of course, 5.7. You know that. In the course of 5.7, of we also uh, introduced NODB cluster, which is HA made, made easy with, uh, uh, for MySQL. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to take a look at NODB cluster, you should. And of course, what we're going to talk today about is MySQL 8.0. And without question, uh, just doing the numbers internally with all the things that we have developed and also the fact that we've been hiring uh, engineers over the years, it's been now since about two and a half years since we, we released 5.7. This is by far the biggest increment and the biggest addition to, to uh, the MySQL uh, uh, release uh, history. It's just so many things there, and of course, I won't have time to cover it all, but I'll try to sort of bring out some highlights. And then you have the rest of the two days here to go to listen to the uh, MySQL talks to, to learn more in, in detail. Uh, so coming back to what I was talking about on the first slide, the document store, which I want to really try to promote here. Um, uh, with 8.0, uh, we now have full JSON support. Uh, we've added a new uh, dev API, just to make sure that everybody understands, because now with this dev API, you don't have to have any SQL knowledge whatsoever. You don't have to set up schemas, think about your relational things. You can just start in your favorite uh, uh, language, whether it's Node or it's uh, Java or .NET, C++, or whatever. We have connectors uh, that enables you to work with this uh, very simple CRUD API which is simple in its starting point, but then, of course, it has a lot of advanced features uh, that you can make use of uh, uh, as you move down um, that path. So it's a very modern uh, API. Uh, it has all these sort of things that you're used to, like method chaining, asynchronous execution, and so on. So I really recommend that you take a look at uh, what we built here. Um, so looking at it from a more uh, sort of uh, graphical picture, you still have your, your uh, relational tables there, but then also you have your documents, your collections, and so on. I think one of the strengths here is, of course, you can mix and match the two, and then you can use the strength of the SQL language to actually access these uh, collections and make very, very advanced uh, 
queries uh, uh, on your data. So you can choose to have part of your data set uh, in, in traditional or relational. You can have it uh, as documents or you can mix the two together so you can have some part of your schema uh, uh, relational and then you can use JSON uh, uh, to extend uh, your uh, relational table. Very, very power we, powerful, we think. Uh, and uh, if you are for some reason considering to to uh, start up a parallel uh, project using a, a document store or some sort of NoSQL, no I really encourage you to take a look at what MySQL can do for you uh, there to avoid uh, uh, spreading yourself across a number of data sets. Uh, looking more at the data store, uh, designed for modern developers, we've really taken sort of a, a ground up approach here uh, to make sure that we make something uh, really targeted to the modern developer, uh, where you have uh, uh, built-in support in IDEs, uh, where, where you can get auto-completion. Uh, we've worked with the documentation from the ground up, very intuitive documentation, following tutorials, examples, so you can sort of successively build up your knowledge and it gets really easy to access this uh, uh, um, uh, new technology. At the core uh, of this is the new shell uh, that, again, I encourage you to take a look at, have a chance. We've had so much good feedback around this uh, shell so far. Uh, you can do rapid prototyping. You co can go into a, a JavaScript prompt and work directly there. And, and it's, I can just, looking at the feedback that we've gotten on blogs and so on, this is, this is really popular. And I, I know when we've done uh, tutorials and, and, and webinars and so on, this, we get very, very good feedback on this, on this uh, tool. I'll come back to uh, the shell a bit later. Um, to be able to um, uh, jump between these two worlds, uh, documents or unstructured JSON data and SQL, we have a very powerful function which is called the JSON table function where you can actually uh, bring out your data from your JSON uh, uh, formatted uh, data and then you get regular tables where you can do all the SQL uh, that you want on top of that. Very, very powerful. Uh, I want to also highlight that uh, MySQL 8 will continue to evolve. Uh, as we've done with 5.7, you've seen a number of JSON functions come out. You've seen uh, uh, InnoDB cluster come out, uh, being revved, improved. We will continue to do that with 8. And here's just a preview of one of the things that will, is are currently on labs. So we'll come in an upcoming release of, uh, of, uh, of MySQL 8, where you have the ability to have also nested JSON uh, objects, and then you'll be able to to flatten those out with the JSON uh, table function. And there's a whole list of JSON uh, functions here. What you see in bold here are the things that we've added from 5.7 to, uh, to 8.0. Um, so just to summarize, uh, JSON, doc store, very, very powerful. And, uh, and if, I, if I would single out a feature, uh, which we've received uh, uh, feedback around, positive feedback around, uh, uh, in 5.7 and 8, I think JSON would be one of those, uh, the JSON support that we have is one of those things that would definitely come way up there on the top. Um, of course, if you, um, uh, the, the JSON are of course blobs or, or, or in, the, uh, in the database. And uh, in the first implementation, these were just blobs. You would do an, uh, an update and you would have to rewrite the whole blob, right? So uh, that's efficient internally in the database, but it's also efficient for the, uh, inefficient for the replication chain, uh, where, of course, when you, if you rewrite the whole uh, blob, then, of course, the whole blob travels through the whole replication chain. So what we've done in 8.0 is uh, made it possible to do partial JSON updates. So this is true for internal optimizations, but also for the replication chain. And you can see how from, uh, let's see, the left-hand side of the, of the slide, uh, where in the earlier version, you could either choose to have, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, the, the, the minimal uh, information in the binary log or the full information, full rows or partial rows, uh, you would get different sizes. And you have a similar thing in the new setup, of course, if you have full rows, and of course, everything goes in, but if you only have partial rows, then the amount of information that you actually have to uh, uh, replicate becomes very, very, very small. Um, okay, 
So moving over to uh, another thing that we've done uh, with 8.0, which was uh, probably one of our biggest projects, uh, which have been going on for quite some time. Uh, to be honest, I think we actually had plans to release this in 5.7, but uh, uh, that never happened. But now it's there. Uh, it's our new data dictionary. And there's just so many things that, that are being enabled uh, with the data dictionary. It's just much, much, much cleaner inside. So one of the reasons why we did this uh, was to make sure that we have a good code base to continue to evolve uh, rapidly on top. But we also get some benefits uh, from it. Uh, so now when we consolidated the data dictionary into one place, we get uh, away with some inconsistencies that could happen between the, the InnoDB data dictionary and the other data dictionary. It's now uh, atomic and crash safe. I'll come back to some other um, benefits uh, shortly. Uh, as I said in, uh, initially, we continue to improve the SQL support. And uh, if I would single out a feature uh, or a set of features around the SQL domain that we've received attention, most attention about, it would probably be around the CTEs and window functions. Um, these are, if you're not familiar with them, it's fairly complex. And if you know it, there's no point in me explaining the concept. Uh, if you are interested, I really encourage you to go into the sessions later to learn more about these uh, powerful SQL um, um, uh, clauses that we've introduced. Uh, another thing which we actually introduced quite early in the ADO cycles, you know, we have our DMRs, so it's been around for quite some uh, time, but it has also been one of those features that have received a lot of attention where we've got a lot of good feedback, and this is how we are able to, uh, with a no wait and skip locked, uh, 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 for example, in a booking system, which is a traditional example where you just want to find in a scan, you want to find uh, an empty seat. Now you don't get stuck on the first locked row and waiting for that one to get unlocked to actually find. Now can, you can do things like no waits and skip lock. Very, very powerful uh, SQL here. And here's another which is more geared towards making it easy to manage your database. Uh, invisible indexes. Um, either if you create a new index or if you want to remove an index, there's always this uncertainty around how is this going to affect the database running, right? And if I make a mistake and I, and I delete and I didn't think things through, it can go, it can go really bad, right? The, the, the whole database can basically die from having to do full table scans where it's supposed to be using an index and so on. But now what we've introduced, you can actually have, it's like a, a, a trash can bin where you can actually move it, but it's act not actually removed, it's still there. And what I forgot to say, of course, if you realize that you did the mistake, it takes forever to recreate it if you have a big um, um, uh, database. Um, but now you can actually just move it into being in a hidden state. It's still maintained, uh, it's still uh, correct, and so on. So if you then discover uh, a few minutes later or hours later or how, how long you want to sort of uh, monitor this before you actually feel confident, uh, you can then say, okay, okay, I'm fine, actually remove it, or it, this was not good, just turn it on again, and then of course it's uh, there again, and your application and your database starts behaving the way it was doing before. Uh, okay, so SQL roles is something new um, uh, that we've introduced, uh, making it much, much easier to, to manage basically privileges uh, uh, instead of on the individual uh, person level. So, um, great new addition. Um, we've done performance improvements. Uh, this is an example in the, in the uh, Sys schema uh, and, and, and performance schema. If you're not familiar with performance schema and Sys schema, you really should be getting on to like 5.7, 8.0 and the latest releases because it's such a powerful set of uh, uh, instructions or tools that you can get insights in what's, what's going on in the, in the system. And improvements here uh, that we've done. This is basically about selecting the right index for performing these kind of queries. So here's another benefit from the work that we've done with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, data dictionary. Uh, so you should probably know or you do know that information schema had some performance problems. If you grew the number of tables, there was just some queries that you would not run in information schema because of this. Uh, but now with a new data dictionary, we see how in red here the actual execution time 
comes down a lot. Uh, and uh, for certain like out increments here, you, it's, it's, it's huge, right? And also for uh, uh, static table info and so on. So huge gains and information in schema basically comes, becomes uh, useful um, in the setup. Another thing that we should be aware of is that we've changed the default uh, in uh, 8.0 to UTF-8. And that is because it's really the de facto standard out there, what people are using uh, to a lot extent. Uh, so uh, that's where you get all the support for emojis, that was where you would get all the language support, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and so on. So this is where people go. Uh, but if you're doing some comparison maybe in some simple benchmark or something, you may, in an older version, make sure that you know, you're running the same uh, setup here and configuration. So, um, uh, another thing that we've done with 8 is really beefed up our uh, GIS support. It started already in 5.7. Um, so now we have uh, full GIS support, uh, very, very powerful. And I think what's, what's important here is that to know is that this is uh, based on, on, on uh, uh, software which is available open source in Boost. So it's experts actually developing the, the, uh, the algorithms and so on, uh, ensuring that correctness. Um, and uh, previous versions of MySQL going back before 5.7, there was our own homegrown GIS. And uh, yeah, we weren't experts in GIS. Now we have, uh, we can leverage basically the, 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 the experts in the area. Here is a, a also a very appreciated features uh, around persistent configuration information. Uh, uh, instead of having then, okay, you go and change some configuration information in the database, then you have to go and sort of change your master uh, repository for the configurations, and you have to maintain these in two places if you want to restart the server and so on, or, or uh, 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 stage it somewhere else, and you want to make sure it comes up in the same way. Uh, now you can actually persist uh, the changes, so when there's a restart, for example, you actually come up with the same uh, uh, set of configurations that you had when you started. Uh, in the relate, relate, latest DMR here, we also act, uh, added on, on feedback from, from you guys uh, uh, capturing timestamps on the user that actually changed uh, the, the configuration value. Um, InnoDB improvements, a lot of improvements, some related to the DocStore JSON with the partial update. We have a new scalable, uh, says, uh, uh, right ahead logging here, but uh, I guess it's the redo log uh, with a log free design uh, and a lot of things. Um, I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to skip slides a bit quickly, but we've done a lot of uh, InnoDB improvements. Uh, uh, here's another thing that's coming down the line that we want to advertise, something that we've uh, worked with Tencent, a contribution from them. So we'll have the instant ad column that they've done, which is a very neat solution that we liked. So hopefully you'll appreciate that when it comes out. Tons of replication improvements. Uh, uh, worked with uh, JF booking and evaluating some of the, uh, the work that we've done on, on the right set parallel. Uh, and we got feedback around the 10x better performance there. I guess there are blogs out there from JF that you can delve into if you want to. Um, we've done the JSON document and then tons of other things as well. Uh, group replication, also a lot of uh, improvements here. Uh, based on feedback that we've gotten on the on the first iterations of this, and again uh, some advertisement for uh, InnoDB cluster, which is okay group replication, MySQL shell, the MySQL router, HA made simple, and you can operate and run this through this shell that I talked about earlier. Not only for doing your if you want to work in in in, uh, in a doc store mode or something, but this is also the shell where you can the one stop shop where you can actually uh, just uh, manage and orchestrate your system as well. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I know you've been waiting for these slides. Uh, show them every time, of course. And uh, we continue to improve our performance and scalability. Uh, these are for the read only, and I think you're firmly familiar with our success in in. Uh, in uh, improving uh, scalability on, on, on read-only. Uh, but one of the big things with 8.0 is the, the, the redo logging, uh, the write-ahead logging that I talked about, and the, the, the great work that was done there, which is, means that our read-write uh, benchmarks now are 
uh, also boosted significantly. Uh, and I encourage you to, to join uh, either or both of you know, DB, uh, uh, Sunny's talks or Dimitri's talks to, to, to uh, dig into the details of this. And of course, tons of new features uh, you can learn about uh, in the coming sessions. Uh, another thing that we added here was the upgrade checker as well. Uh, you want to upgrade to eight. What are the possible problems uh, that you could encounter? Uh, this tool will identify potential issues and also advise you on actions that you can take. So to summarize, uh, with 8.0, we continue to innovate and evolve. DocStore, huge thing. Uh, we continue to improve our InnoDB cluster story. HA made uh, easy. Uh, our SQL is better. We have tons of new JSON stuff. GIS is a first class citizen in the database with all the support that you would expect from a GIS uh, implementation, uh, very uh, uh, competitive with, with, with other competitors. And then if, if improving replication and all the things that you expect to see in a new version of uh, MySQL around reliability, observability, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll finish off with this slide uh, uh, with all the things that you can learn. Uh, pick either from here or from the uh, schedule that you can find uh, on the uh, website or in the, the app. Um, uh, a lot of good stuff here uh, delivered by the people who actually implemented these things. So you can ask questions and hear things directly from the horse's mouth. Thank you very much. <laughs>